Welcome to Castle of Alchemist, a beautifully crafted pixel art tower defense action game. An experiment to speed up the quest in finding the Philosopher's Stone has gone horribly wrong. Instead of bringing the alchemist's immense power, it brought hostile otherworldly beings bent on overthrowing the alchemist's castle. You play as Commander Bellator, a hulked out super soldier whose sole purpose is to vanquish the evil invaders from overtaking the castle. Think medieval doom guy. The game is reminiscent of the Orcs Must Die series or Tecmo's Deception. Boy, I'm dating myself there. You begin armed with a sledgehammer and a blunderbuss, which both have satisfying animations and switching between them is a necessity. You can't swing the hammer too much, or you'll waste your stamina bar. Your blunderbuss is a short range and has a delay between shots. Later, I also got a crossbow. This has a larger clip, but is weaker and has a reload time. As you conquer sections of the castle, you'll gain experience and then can spend those towards increasing your stats, such as your stamina, so you can swing and dodge more times in a row, or increase your damage with elemental attacks. Each section of the castle, you will begin in a planning phase, building your defenses for the next wave of enemies. You can see the enemy's path they will be moving during this phase. Your objective is to stop them from entering the next section of the castle. If you lose your health, you'll basically respawn and have to wait until your health goes up. Then press spacebar to get back in the fight. There are resource costs with each item build out. You can undo these at any time holding the left shift key. During the combat phase, you have traps to set, plus a toolbar of items you can use. Some are a one or two time use per wave and others have a countdown timer. Then a counter will appear above your head showing when it's ready. Each level has a variety of different enemy types, each having their own weaknesses and strengths. Some enemies have ranged attacks, others melee, or some even have both. Now I know I've talked a lot about the game itself and not the experience on the Steam Deck, so now we'll give that some attention. I did play it both on my Windows PC and the Steam Deck, and both experiences were good. Like most games on the Steam Store, for the Steam Deck, the game is currently marked unsupported, but it is entirely playable. Though this is to be expected because we still have one more day until it's available for purchase even in early access. The game is built on the Unity engine, and I made no changes after installing. I just launched, and it way it went. Unfortunately, there's no controller support yet, but I've been told that this is a priority for the release. With the beauty of the Steam Deck is Steam Input. I went ahead and added my own Steam Input community layout for the Steam Deck, which I think works well enough. I assigned a virtual menu on the left trackpad to the number keys you use for the tool menu for the combat and planning phase. You should see this in the community layout section. It's a little more difficult, however, for me with the Steam Deck over a traditional mouse and keyboard. However, the difficulty is something that the developers plan to take a close look at during the early access phase. Did I mention that this whole game is being developed by just two people? While the game does lack polish on some items, the core game itself is all here and ready to go. I'm also intrigued about the story about this game. How did things get up to this point? What is life like outside the castle? Who is Bellator, and why was he in hibernation? Or more importantly, who are the invaders? The developers say we can expect answers to these questions as the game progresses through early access. Although the focus of the game is not the story, it's a satisfying gameplay. There are some items I'd like to see for polish and quality of life such as being able to see the area of effect of traps after they're set in the planning phase. Being able to see an outline of an object that's behind a wall during the planning phase. The user interface, while I love it 
because it reminds me of the menus of Warcraft 3. It needs more vibrance. For example, outside of combat, there are brown scrolls with black text over a dark brown book with tools that are all brown and black. It's all a bit too muddy. I think it could benefit from a broader color palette and still keep the theme intact. These are all small complaints and typical in an early access title, but the meat of the game is ready right now. So to summarize, the good, fun and satisfying gameplay loop, gorgeous pixel art and animations, great thematic music elements when they're there, challenge and reward system, a weapon crafting system, a variety of traps and turrets, several different enemy types, level progression, and then the not so good, or things I would like to see. Controller support, overall polish on the UI and planning phase, adding in an endless mode, difficulty adjustment, more story elements, music on the planning phase and other non-combat areas, NPC dialogue and interaction outside of combat, and better character movement animation. If you're interested, you can pick it up on May 17th on Steam, and the link is in the description. Overall, I do think it's a very enjoyable game so far from what they built, and the artwork is beautifully designed, so I think they have something really enjoyable and special here. I don't know the exact price yet, so be on the lookout on May 17th when it launches on Steam for early access. If you end up getting it, let me know what you think in the comments. See you next time.